like a Virtual Reviews logo? If you do, then you might want to buy a t-shirt with the channel's logo. Just head to geekygoodies.com slash reviews and grab a t-shirt for yourself or your friends. By buying Virtual Reviews t-shirts, you are supporting the channel, so thank you for that. And don't forget that you can also support the channel through Patreon. Just head to patreon.com slash reviews and choose the reward level that suits you best. Your support means a lot. With enough support, this channel will continue providing you with the content and you will be able to contribute to that as well. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports this channel. Hello there, folks. So uh, today it's not going to be like, really like a vlog series. It's a collection run through. It's an update. Uh, quite a few things happened in my life and uh, of course there was Essen as well and such so the collection has changed radically. It's not a definitive collection of games. There are games that I haven't tried yet. There are review copies and such so it will change. It might change. I might sell some games and so on. So that's that. And I'm going to go through uh, all the games that I have in, on this shelf right now. There are only two games that are missing because they uh, are with my friends. Um, First Class and Burgle Brothers, which I both love. So at least you know that I love those games. They're really, really cool games. So, but everything else uh, should be here. Plus a few games are coming from Kickstarter soon, but let them be. I'm going to make a collection update today, which is uh, not the day of posting. I will post this video uh, during this week, but I'm filming this on Monday 29th. All right, so let's go to the games and see what we have here. So first, these are the small games that I have here. I put them up here, it's easier to grab them. So this is the Crossfire, uh, which is from Planet Games. Uh, it has some uh, roles and uh, the groups, whatever, the teams. I don't know much about the game except it plays 5 to 10 and as I recently started playing with uh, my colleagues from work who don't play many games and they, they're not into games. So I introduced them to new games, I have introduced them some uh, bigger games as well but I need some lighter ones as well which play with bigger groups from starting from 6 people to whatever the count. So there is behind there is the Dice Stars which is a great uh, I like this very much. This is a roll and write game where you basically roll dice, you pick them up as uh, numbers or colors and you want to fill those columns and rows and then sometimes you push your luck with the X's with the stars to double your score but you can get zero if you will not completely fill the X's right there. Anyway, it's uh, from Brunkadon, Ludovic Mablanc, a nice duo and they are making great games. So Dice Stars is a great one. Then we have Insider, which I have played with my colleagues uh, for many, many, many times. It's basically guessing the word with hidden roles, with Insider, which is kind of like a werewolf, but he's uh, on a good side. He wants us to guess the word, but then he doesn't want to be uh, found out. And Commons and Master, and this is really, I like the pace of it. It's, it's extremely uh, fast-paced uh, and it's engaging. Everyone is asking, everyone is doing something. Insider, a really great party game. Plays with a uh, better, a bigger number of players also. Then Tiny Epic Quest, which I have not played yet. And this should have those item meeples. And should be like a quest type with push your luck and such. Got it from Kickstarter. I don't know what to think about this one. I heard some, you know, good reviews and uh, bad reviews about this game. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, so uh, behind here we have the two copies, the third copy somewhere else is the Valley of the Kings. I'm going to show only one. This is one of my favorite, if not my favorite deck builder. Because it's, it's small and I like the pyramid basis of it, um, where you can buy the cards only from the bottom of the pyramids. And you have to entomb your cards in order to score them as a set collection. Which means it's not only like, it's like a deck builder where you buy cards and then you count all the cards you have at the end of the game and you see how many points you have, blah, 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 boring. Here you have to entomb cards. But if you entomb a card, that means that you cannot use that card. It goes into set collection pile. So that's a really great game. And I have three sets of those, which I, I usually play separately. I don't really um, mix them up. The Valley of the King's Last Rites was the last set so far. 
I'm hoping for the big bucks. Then Ravens of Three Sahashri, which is a cooperative game. Um, I'm not going to show everything, but basically it's it's a review copy here, so I have to review that anyway. And it's a lovely game. Uh, it's a weird game. One is playing uh, the, the, that girl, and the other one is uh, trying to save the girl from the dreams or whatever. And um, basically, yeah, it's it's a puzzle. It's just like a uh, you, the greeds and such you are forming and trying to get the cards from there. It's it's weird and it's interesting. I'm uh, gonna play it more for the review. So Mercatores, which reminded me of uh, of um, Bonanza, uh, which is basically, or was it Bonanza? I think it was. So you can see also the values of the three, five, seven. You get that many coins. If you uh, pull out that many set collection stuff out, and uh, this has uh, English rules as well in it, so it's small. It looks uh, it looks beautiful, but it's very easy. It's like it is like Bonanza kinda. So and then behind here we have in between a beautiful box. You can see you can see the game, but the game is also beautiful. It's like a little bit comic style um, art. And this game where one is playing the good guy, the other play is, is playing the bad guy. And you're trying to get citizen on your side, whether you play a good or bad guy. So that's that. And yeah, it's very lovely. It's, you go around the, like, a, not a rondel, a kind of is. And I mean, not, not a rondel, but you go in a circle and you play cards from your deck and the decks are different. It's asymmetric and you're trying to kind of push towards yourself. Cloud Mine, uh, which we just played, I'm not sure what to think about this one. Uh, it has uh, those weird, uh, like um, when you go into psychiatry or something like that, when you have those, uh, the ink um, tests or whatever they are, where it's like weird shapes. Here it's a party game where uh, you have different roles. One is daydreamer, lookout and the spectators, and you're trying to kind of um, give a hint to a card, but so that uh, less people guess it or something like that. If none guess, guesses them, then you did your job bad as well because then you will not claim any points. Anyway, so this is uh, this is Cloud Mine. Uh, very easy. I don't know. It's. I think it will be good for children. So what we have here? Here we have Sweet Stack, uh, which is a Tetris type game. And in Sweet Stack, you um, basically you choose those cards, those shapes, Tetris shapes for each other. You you give it to the partner on your left or right, depending. And uh, yeah, and you do it like Tetris. You kind of push this uh, card from the from above and you mark it down. Like a roll and write game, but with Tetris. Very lovely, some special abilities involved. And so I like it very much as a light game that you can travel with as well. Uh, behind here is Catacombs, and I'm going to pull it out because it's a heavy... Catacombs is a dungeon crawl um, flicking game. It's a really great game. I, I like it best with two because, because the dungeon lord has a lot to flick, has a lot to do, and then the hero will have a lot to do because uh, hero will control four, uh, four heroes, sorry, four characters, uh, hero player. And thus will get a lot of chances to hit, miss, whatever, and to do his own cooperation between the characters and such. So I make the best out of it. So I do like this one, Flicking Game. It, it's thematic, it's great, it's big. The only problem is that there are a lot of rules and such. So let it be. So what do we have here? Uh, Knoxford, uh, which I... Didn't I review this one? I had to review this one. I think I reviewed. If not, I have to review this one. Anyway, so it's a it's a nice game, a small game, a territory control, um, where you put your thugs uh, down here. You're trying to control the symbols on top, so you score them. But sometimes uh, other players can play uh, better rank cards and your cards and such. So kind of building building up the city and trying to control it with your uh, with your people, and whoever has the most uh, influence will get the control and such. So. Small, easy, lovely, good-looking game. Then in this box, and this is the... Um, by the way, this is the demo scenario of... Um, the upcoming scenario of Pirates, whatever the... Uh, it has the time stories. And this is kind of a demo. It's a prequel to that Pirate scenario. Then... Uh, yeah, and I haven't played it, as you can see. 
Uh, then here we have Red 7 in this box. Red 7 is a lovely game of numbers and colors. It's a very smart game in my opinion. Very engaging, uh, very easy to teach and learn. Uh, you're changing the rules and then you're playing the cards so you can win your round. If you cannot win your round, you're out of the round. Out of the round. Round of the round. <laughs> anyway, uh, lovely uh, game. It's not the original box, it's just deck box here. Then Harvest Dice, which I have to review as well. Uh, it's a roll and write game. Uh, with uh, what do we have here? Uh, when you well, you are basically rolling the dice, you are putting the veggies down, and then a little bit of the weird scoring uh, thing going on there. Looking cool, looking lovely, looking small. I think for me it's a little bit too light of a roll and write game. I prefer dice stars, but we're gonna see. I have to play it more, and then I'm gonna review it. Harvest dice looks nice. Then we have Amun Ray, uh, which is a, a card game here. Um, this is the auction game, and the other the other side of the box is used for for the scoring and such. So um, this is the uh, auction game from Rainer Kanitsia, and it's very lovely. It's light. It's it's engaging. It's I think it's a good introduction into auctions. For uh, for example, my group of colleagues uh, who don't play uh, board games really, and so I can. Uh, teach them new mechanics, for example, uh, the auction mechanic through this game. Very lovely one. I would definitely recommend this as a lighter dish. And now it's all falling apart. Then we have uh, Pocket Mars here, uh, which is from Board and Dice. Uh, it's a very lovely game. I like it. So you kind of you want to get your um, cubes, your Earthlings to to Mars. And then you have those cards. And there is a uh, the the bottom ability and the, the the first and second ability. And depending on where you, if you have a card in the hand or you have the card in front of you, you use either of those abilities. You can use each other bottom abilities and such. So, kind of somebody can play your card if it's uh, in front of you and not in your hand. And there are some special abilities. You're trying to get the energy in order to send people to there and then score points. Blah blah blah. And those uh, places on Mars also have special abilities when you send there, depending on the number of cards, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, a lovely, small, um, but smart game. That's Pocket Mars. And I think I did a preview, but maybe I'm going to do the review as well. Then Afterlife, I left the Kings, the third set, or I don't remember, Last Rites was the third set, or doesn't matter. I have three sets of those because I love this game. I just love it. I need a big box for that. Nomads. Uh, Nomads is a very light set collection game. Um, I don't know what to think about it. I played it only once and it, I played with my colleagues who are not gamers. So you can already see that the, uh, the good part about that one is that you can play with people who are not into games. Um, but for me it was maybe it's boring, a little bit too boring. I don't know, Nomads anyway, looking cool but just you know too light of a set collection game I can show them better set collection games in my opinion. World Wars which I play with my colleagues as well some of them at least who uh, grasp this wonderful game I love it it's kind of a, like a storage wars but in a fantasy world and you're opening those um, chests and there you have items you uh, other players can one is master the other players can peek at some items and you will then auction that uh, chest with those items, sometimes you can get junk, sometimes you get really cool, sometimes you're gonna bluff, but then maybe you will over bluff yourself and pay too much money, whatever. It's a very light game. I would love to get an expansion or something extra to this game, but it's a great game. I love it. It's World Wars. Then a new game, uh, Tesseract, which I have not played, just came in. Um, in the English rules inside, but nothing else. It's like a greed building, something like that. There were colors I saw as well in the in the box. So looking cool. Tesseract. Maybe a little bit too fantasy -ish. But um, why not? Two to four. I'm gonna try it and see what happens with this game. If it's good or not. There are no English reviews. Uh, this is review co copy. Another review copy here is Muse, which I like very much. Basically, you are in teams and you are... Let me see, there are so I'm sorry. Those cards. Um, 
you have those really cool looking cards and then one team is picking up the hint that you need to give like for example name a published book or hum a melody or make a sound effect or whatever or name a furniture vegetable and then uh, a team is the other team is picking for you the hint and the uh, card and then um, your team need to guess it, but one of you is the muse who knows the card, who knows the hint. He will give you the hints and your teammates need to guess the word, uh, not the word, the card out of all the cards that are in the center. So the card that uh, the muse saw will be mixed with all the other cards that he doesn't know and he didn't see. And it's a beautiful, it's light, it's really easy to teach, learn and play. Very lovely game. Um, Maybe at some point it would be great to have an expansion with more and more, more cards. Like Dixit type, as I tell some people. Anyway, uh, let's go further. Here. Um, here we have Peak Oil, which is a economic game. And I'm really pumped about this game. I haven't played it. Uh, but you're kind of building up their future technologies. You know, because the oil um, is almost out of... The world is almost out of oil, something like that. Crisis and profits. And this is... a just looks cool. Um, I don't remember much about the game, but I'm really looking forward to this one. It was on Kickstarter, so it's a Kickstarter copy. And time Storage, which I now... You know about Time Storage, basically. Uh, which I have uh, played now a few more times. Uh, no, not a few more times, sorry. Uh, I, I played the first four scenarios, I'm going to play more. I played the last scenario I played with my colleagues. Although they haven't played the other scenarios, I played the fourth scenario with my colleagues and it was lovely. Um, it was maybe a little bit too linear, the, the Egypt one, but still, each time I play Time Stories, I have great time and the uh, time goes by, we played in one sit in like six, five to seven hours basically, and so, yeah. Then this extremely heavy box, and this is the new game from Ryan Lockett, and this is Empires of the Void. Uh, it, it's beautiful, it has those really nice miniatures as well. Uh, Lots of rules, as I saw the rule book, I was like, wow, lots of rules, but uh, this game looks amazing. I'm sure Ryan Lockett uh, did a great job with the gameplay as well, and I'm looking forward to this one. Like, and Maybe it will be the space game that, that I love and that I will keep in my collection eventually. Apocrypha, which is a review copy, and I'm not sure about this one now. It's a adventure card game but it has just abysmal rule book um, and lots of stuff going on and I need to find a person to play with maybe I play it like a two-player game but I'm, I'm, I'm curious to try this one really because I haven't tried any adventure card games the big ones so this is the one this is the chance for me so then we have the champions of Midgard and champions of Midgard I have this kind of a big box and it's upside down who cares? Uh, in Champions of Midgard, you play as Vikings and you have those dice, those are, those are warriors. It's a worker placement game, uh, but with warriors, uh, you kind of roll the dice in, order, in combat in order to defeat monsters, so you can get them as trophies and you get money, you get points, you get set collection, blah, blah, blah. The expansions add, so what, what's cool about the expansions is that they add... Uh, two more, like there are modules basically. One module is with rangers, which are extra warriors and extra place to go to to fight monsters. But the other one is the Valhalla, where like usually if your warriors die, they die. Your dice go away. And if you were really unlucky with your rolls, that's that. In Valhalla, your if your dice die, uh, they warriors, uh, you get the uh, you get those tokens of those warriors and you can use those tokens in order to buy some um, out, of, out of the world cards which will give you quite a few points and so on. So kind of balances out so if you get uh, bad luck in rolling you get something instead. So then one of my very favorite games is Mission Red Planet. I always loved this game. Each time I played it and I played it with my colleagues recently and you have those roles and you want to get to Mars in order to control those areas and get the points out of them, the mining points and so on. And you have those ships and you put your, um, uh, your miniatures on those ships. And I really like because of the roles and outguessing and outsmarting your opponents, Mission Red Planet, exceptional game. Then another game that I played with my uh, colleagues, by the way, it's Stockpile. 
and it's not the game that I expected to like because it doesn't look as exciting when you look at this back of the box. But it's an amazing game. I love it. It's a stock market. It's a pure stock market game with auction and such. So, and you know, part of the information what company will go down in 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 price or up in price, and then the other is no part of information, and then you kind of a little bit bluffing, a little bit of that push your luck as well. It's an amazing game, stockpile. Would definitely recommend it to everyone. Dead of Winter, one of my other favorite games. I have a long night. I I I sold my. Um, core box the the dead of winter just when because i i don't play it as often and it's enough for me to just have one box but i still do love it this this is basically the base game plus the modules that said you don't need to have two boxes if you if you play this game like 100 times yeah um, maybe i don't have that much time uh, so for me this is enough and there are enough characters although there are less characters than in the base game Blah, 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 the winter, you have zombies, apocalypse, there might be a traitor amongst you, you're trying to survive through different scenarios, and it's just an amazing game, the winter. So, here we have the escape room, the game, um, this one has, I have, these are, these are kind of replayable, there are some uh, components that you can reprint, and this is the uh, es escape room in the game, really cool one, uh, some of them aren't, uh, maybe, First few scenarios, although all of the scenarios were ex very exciting, I put it I put it on the same level as Unlock and Exit series because I love this very very much. This is a very great with that with that mechanism right there with the keys and such that you put in in this machine. Um, it's thematic. It has art. It has kind of a spatial element to it, in my opinion. Escape from the game, amazing. I love it. So, Mare Nostrum, uh, which is an empire building game with a lot of trading and kind of a Euro elements to it, although it has a lot of fighting and such, So, but it's a beautiful game, uh, it's um, it's engaging, it, it doesn't have that many, although it kind of has many rules, it doesn't have that many rules, it's straightforward, it's streamlined, and I just love this game, I love uh, to get the heroes and customize yourself kind of with those heroes, Mare Nostrum, not a war game, more like an Empire Euro type hybrid game, so... Um, then Near and Far, a great, great game. I need to play it more, though. With the storybook, with this map that you go through, the different scenarios you play, you can play the campaign. It's kind of a above and below next level, which basically... Uh, I don't need above and below anymore because I have this one. See? So, uh, here we have Four Gods, which is a tiling game, real-time tiling game, like a Carcassonne type. Uh, the box is really cool with those four um, gods right here. You can rotate it however you want. It's a beautiful game. I like it. Some people don't like it because it's like a fast Carcassonne. I do like it very much. It's, I don't know, it's just so engaging in my opinion. Unfair, which is uh, you're building your park. You have those theme parks. Um, all of you have some kind of a decks and then you can uh, screw with each other and such. And it looks beautiful. It looks great. Card plate, the blow building. I like that stuff. Uh, we'll see. I haven't played it yet. Uh, then we have uh, Guards um, of Atlantis, uh, which is like a MOBA-style game. And uh, I haven't played this one, but it's a review copy. I will play it. I will review it. And I hope to like it. And it's I haven't played any MOBA-style games, so it's kind of a challenge for me. So something new. That's great. Then Bunny Kingdom that I haven't played, that I have to review it anyway. And I'm hoping for a great game here. It's like a puzzle-type game. Lots of scoring, spatial element, like a territory building and such. From Richard Garfield. Looking forward to this one. Going to review this one as well. And then Room 25, uh, plus the Escape Room expansion they have inside here which I bought because of my colleagues as well, because I think they will like the theme. And it's like a next level game, but it's a cooperative game with Traitor and such. We can maybe play full cooperative at first. And um, I do like the... I always wanted to have this game, and it, this game should work with six players, so that's amazing. And yeah, like the Cube, the movie, but in a board game. So that's that. Let's go further. Sorry about that. So what do we have here? Um, here we have Otis, which is, um, how to say, it's a very thinky, puzzly type game where you have your divers, uh, your divers have some abilities and you activate those divers, you get some stuff, 
in order to score uh, more uh, uh, points. You get, basically, you, you get the stuff in order to get those objective cards. And then from objective cards, you're going to score points. There are not many points, but it's very puzzling. It's like what to activate where at what time in order to get this at the other time and so on and so on and so on. Very thinky game. Otis, I don't know what to think about this one. Maybe it's, it's a little bit too puzzly, too thinky for me. I don't want to think too much. So, but depends. Some games I, I do like. Some, this is a little bit more abstracted. So it's not like, it's not an amazing game, in my opinion. But we'll see. Then Cosmo Genesis, where what, what basically caught my eye is that it has this kind of a, uh, you're building up the, uh, you're building the planet system. It's simulator kinda of cosmos where you're building the planet system. It's like scientific. It's not a you know fantasy space, whatever Star Wars, blah blah blah. I don't care about that at all. But here, like planetary system, building this up, creating planet. What? Wow! It's look like it sounds amazing. And the box cover. I'm sorry. I need to pull it that way then. And the box cover. Look at that. Oh, love it. Amazing. I love that. Great, so this Cosmogenesis, then we have, if I can ever put it back. Anyway, uh, then we have uh, Xi'an, which is a very light kind of a set collection, a little bit of that scoring. Um, you, you are building the Terracotta army and you're painting it into your own colors, area control. Very easy, I don't know what to think about it. I expected much more from this game, it's a little bit maybe too light for, for me. Uh, but I want to try it again, maybe with my colleagues as well to see how they grasp it, maybe it, it will fit the taste of, of them and then we can play it with them. So it looks it looks nice, but it was kind of on the light side. Uh, then we have the Wasteland Delivery Express Service, uh, which is post-apocalyptic, you know, kind of a Mad Max Universe style game and those whatever, I don't know. And I cannot even pull them out. Uh, I cannot pull the, out this... Uh, Wasteland Express. So, uh, so in this game, uh, it's a set um, uh, pick and uh, pick up and delivery. I cannot say that word. Pick up and deliver game, uh, kind of like a Mad Max universe. You're upgrading your truck, and then you are going to markets, and there are raiders and such. So you're going through. You are competing with each other. Really cool trucks where you can put those. Um, resources. I haven't played this yet, and it should be, have a lot of rules and such. Blah blah blah. But I'm gonna go through that anyway. And I would love to love this game. So the Palace of King Ludwig, uh, which is a sequel to Castles of King Ludwig, where you are building one palace all together instead of just building separate palaces. And yeah, that's why I want it. I haven't tried it yet, but the Castle of King Ludwig because I love Castles of King Ludwig. I, I love the auction uh, mechanism. I, I love building up my castle, making it as crazy as possible. So Castles of King Ludwig, very lovely game. Um, then we have The Godfather, which some people didn't like as much. I don't know, I liked it very much. Uh, it has this worker placement area control aspect. It looks really cool. It has those uh, crates where you are basically uh, building a cool looking game, great components in my opinion. And yeah, building up the influence and you are have to take that element as well because it's a Godfather. I don't care that it's not a an exact, you know, uh, God, based on Godfather movie. Don't care about that. Mafia game. It's Kitchen Rush, which is the um, the real-time cooperative game with... Uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's with sand timers where you are running the kitchen and the restaurant. And it looks very thematic. I would love to play with my colleagues because we all work in the restaurant, so that would be perfect fit for us. I'm hoping for a great game, a uh, great cooperative game. Um, I'm hoping for not too many rules, uh, so I can teach my colleagues. I'm going to go through that. I haven't played it yet. But yeah, a uh, very much anticipated game from my unplayed games list. Then we have Zoo Ball here. Uh, Zoo Ball is a very easy flicking game. You can see it here, but basically... It's a, there's a player mat and there are those pieces. You have the three defenders, one scorer. You need to get your score in a circle. You can play a two-player or four-player game. Four-player game is much more engaging, in my opinion. Uh, although two-player game is fine as well. It's very easy, like very few rules, but like 
based on what components it has. It has very, very few components and very few rules. It's still very engaging. It's good to play when you don't want to think too much and you just want to have some pure fun. Uh, then, of course, Inish, Kemet, Inish you know, uh, most likely. Inish is a Celtic um, mythology card drafting and area control game. Um, very lovely, I need to play it more. And the more you play, the more I appreciate this game. Uh, then we have Kemet, uh, which is a great game. Uh, Kemet is uh, like Inish is below Kemet for me. I love Kemet more, but I have expansion for Kemet. And Kemet has this kind of engine building where you are uh, getting your upgrades and the pyramids and you're attacking each other, you have those monsters. It's just an amazing game in my opinion. Uh, I didn't like it the first time I played it, but the second time I played it was like, wow, it clicked with me. It's like, now I understand why this game is so good. Um, and of course, it, those are great tiles that you get and you kind of customize yourself. I love it. Uh, then we have Cyclades, uh, which is my number one game of all time. And it still is, and I like the base game plus Hades expansion. Anyone who tells that, uh, the ones that have tried this Hades expansion and say, oh, the Titans make the game better. No, the Titans make the game different. And if it's better for you, yes. Or I would rather play Kemet then. Uh, I, wouldn't, I don't like Titans that much. Um, but I like the Hades expansion, I like the Monument expansion that I would mix in with this one. I like the sudden win condition. Thing as well because the monsters the auction everything it's so fitting it's so satisfying and it's so perfect this game is just perfect for me and try with the Hades expansion and don't listen to other players uh, who say that oh you don't need the Hades expansion because you need Titans no try with Hades and then see if you like it uh, or not and then try with Titans so Outleave is a big box here it's uh, I have the deluxe version I just I just bought it so I don't know like I haven't played it, but it's post-apocalyptic world. A huge box, but you know, I'm not gonna pull it out. Post-apocalyptic world with uh, full stuff and such. So um, I don't know. I'm just gonna see. I, I don't know. I just got in the hype and then bought this game. Then Scythe, which I have all the expansions for, and then uh, I cannot even pull it out, but let it be. Um, I have the expansions, I have the wooden inserts, and such. So it's an amazing hybrid type game. We have the, the kind of a, the, the danger, the fear of combat, but not really the combat. The engine building is perfect. I love engine building in games. It's just, I love it. So that's why Scythe is one of my favorite games. Um, so on. So you have heard about Scythe. So Tale of Pirates, by the way, if you haven't heard Tale of Pirates, it was released in Essen. It's a cooperative game. It's also similar. There are also sand timers like in Kitchen Rush. And then here you um, control the ship. It has the app as well. And the app gives you the timer and the missions and such. So, and you're trying to combat off the um, the other ships, the enemy ships, and trying to get the mission done, whatever the mission is, finding some stuff or doing some stuff or raiding and whatever. And th those different slots are the worker spots, basically for your sand timers. And you put put the sand timer in, and then whoever has, uh, I'm gonna. I think I'm going to review this game, so I'm not going to talk about much about this, but this is, this has 10 chapters, which are all like a sealed, but so you can play them in order, and I don't know, I just really like this game, uh, it's very cool, um, and really straightforward, it's not that many rules, if you play it for, from the first chapter you will learn more and more, but it's rather straightforward, um, cooperative game with real-time aspects, so that's that, then Anachrony. And I'm gonna do this video in two parts, so I'm not gonna show you the other, the, the last two rows of that. I'm gonna show them in the next video. But Anachrony is uh, a huge game. Um, I'm not gonna pull it out completely. So basically, it's a time travel game, but it's a heavy, heavy Euro game. Although the, it's a work, worker placement, and I have this kind of a deluxe, the whatever version with all the expansions and such from the Kickstarter. And they, I even have the uh, the wooden insert. And Anachrony, I like it. Uh, although it's very heavy, it's straightforward. It's for the heaviness of it. It's streamlined. You know, it's not it's not fiddly, heavy game. It's uh, it is heavy, but it's streamlined as well. So I do like that, uh, and I do like all the aspects of going back and getting getting stuff, and then kind of you need to get that stuff back in time because you loaned it from, from the other time and blah, blah, blah. And you have those chronobots, and then you 
go into some worker spots and then you get uh, stuff done from that. It's basically a worker placement game. Um, just, just a really, really cool game, uh, Anachrony. And that's it for now. Um, so uh, right now we went through all of those and then we're going to go through the last two uh, shelves right here or rows. And yeah, here's the first part of the updated collection run through. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And also don't forget to check out my Patreon page and see if you want to support the channel as well. Thanks. Bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.